Sega. Hello everyone and welcome to the Realm of the Wood Elves campaign let's play. Today we'll be taking a look at how they play on the Grand Campaign. However, they do have their own mini campaign where you can explore the mysterious and beautiful Athel Lauren, fending off invaders and securing the forest for yourself. On the Grand Campaign, they play a bit differently, leaving their home and venturing out into the old world in search of a precious resource called Amber. So the first thing the players will notice is how the geography of the map has changed. Athel Lauren has opened up with five new regions on the Grand Campaign, with a new mountain pass through the vaults which grants access to it from the east. We're playing as the Wood Elves under Orion, which gives us the God King of Athel Lauren trait, increasing our leadership during forest battles, reducing our upkeep of wild riders, and allowing use of the wild hunt. So we're currently on turn 71, and looking at the faction summary screen, we can quickly see that we own 13 settlements. We've made some allies and some enemies in the process, however, we're currently losing 191 gold per turn, which is something we're gonna need to fix. So let's go ahead and select Orion and bring him out of his starting region of Kingsglade into Talson to get a better look at him. Having been a young prince now reborn as a god king, Orion is quite a beefy legendary lord, formidable in melee combat and able to throw the Spear of Kronos to impale fleeing enemies. As a result, I've been using him as my primary army of conquest, which has earned him a few Wood Elf specific traits. However, he starts with the King in the Woods trait, granting a considerable speed buff to all elven units in his army, and the Crown of Command, enabling him to instill great courage in a unit, making them unbreakable. We just recently defeated the Broken Nose tribe before garrisoning in Kingsglade to replenish, so now it's time we spend our skill point we earned in our last battle. Hawk's Talon is a bombardment ability that fits neatly in his missile oriented path. Progressing this way will grant you Prey of Anathrema, halting a unit in place and making them more vulnerable to missile fire. Hounds of Orion is a small vortex spell which opens up the melee path, eventually ending in Deadly Onslaught which is a familiar ability for melee lords. Doubling up with a second missile chain for the army is where Orion really shines for me. Reducing reload, then increasing damage, ammunition and speed, Orion can then gain the Sight Beyond Sight passive ability, allowing everyone within range to gain 12% missile damage. Couple this with Prey of Anathrema and you can wipe out a high tier unit from a distance with ease. Working down his second battle effects chain is more melee focused, ending with Howl of the Forest passive ability, granting increased melee attack to his allies around him. Lastly, Orion's campaign effects fall largely in line with other legendary lords, granting increased range, item drop chance, replenishment rates, and lightning strike battles. Now in the previous turn, we just unlocked the quest battle Horn of the Wild Hunt. This will grant us an extra melee defense, leadership, and a chance of intercepting armies that use the underway and beast paths, so it's worth chasing down. We can see the quest battle is relatively close to home, so let's send Orion up north to complete it. It'll take him a couple turns to get there, but we can see that it'll also grant 1,500 experience, and with abilities such as Orion's, that experience is invaluable. What's more, we'll get a specific ability that will grant a map-wide speed and charge bonus in battle, meaning we may want to orientate more cavalry-focused after we equip it. Now as I mentioned before, Athel Lauren is split into five regions between different elven factions. Waterfall Palace, Val's Anvil, Crag Halls of Findal, and King's Glade. However, the focal point of Athel Lauren is the Oak of Ages. This is the heart of Athel Lauren and falls under the Wood Elves' control at the beginning of a campaign. It only has one building, the Oak of Ages itself, and it starts off in a dormant state. The Oak of Ages grants a series of major campaign-wide buffs that you can view at any time. Buffs to public order, upkeep, experience and corruption make it a necessity to grow and protect. However, it does require the consumption of a new exotic resource, Amber. It just so happens that I now have enough to upgrade the Oak of Ages, and considering our financial situation, I think it's imperative that we do so now, as it'll take 5 turns before it actually comes into effect. We can now see that I have zero Amber at my disposal. Amber is being provided by several settlements I own, but being consumed by several units, technologies and buildings I have present also. My military allies, Clan Angron to the south, are giving me their supply of amber because they don't need it. If they lose their capital for instance, I'll plunge into an amber deficit immediately, halting replenishment and hurting public order faction wide. So eagle eyed viewers out there may have noticed that the Wood Elves can conquer any region they wish on the map. 
During the early turns of the campaign, I've defeated Carcassonne and the Beastman tribes to the south, working my way along the coast fighting Astalia and Tilia. I've also recently taken Zarek Zil to finish off the Broken Nose tribe when Clan Angrand were busy with the Crooked Moon, and managed to colonize some raised territories to the east. It's time to plan the next expansion though. As we're short on Amber, we should look to take another settlement close by, with our second army led by ancient treeman Thilvokas. Now the Wood Elves cannot issue commandments in provinces, so we really have complete liberty with where we want to capture. However, Zavorak is the next obvious choice to take if we want to protect Clan Angren's south. It's a little bit out of the way though, and we are in a hurry. So what we'll do is use the world roots. The world roots stem from the Oak of Ages and spread out across the Old World. It allows the Wood Elves to bypass mountain ranges, rivers and settlements to get to places quickly. Now we're out of movement points across the board, let's end the turn. Ah, it seems Bordalo want a defensive alliance, but they are currently at war with Arguillan, another Wood Elf faction led by Durthu. We wouldn't want to make him angry, so we'll have to decline for now. Funnily enough, Bretonia have confederated with Bordalo now, combining their strength. We've lost our trade, furthering our negative income. We still have good relations, and I think we'd like to keep it that way for the time being. Time to move Orion closer to the quest battle. He's still one turn away and has space in his army for another unit. His Rostat, a branch right to the north that I've been leveling up, would be the perfect addition to his army to cast some Lore of Shadow spells in battle, so we'll pull him down to the south to join Orion. Looking at his skills, we can see some of the spells available to him, such as the Penumbral Pendulum, a powerful wind spell. In the interest of time, I won't go through each spell here, but hopefully we'll fire off a few in battle soon. For now, let's upgrade his melee attack augment to help those around him. We could deploy him on the map to cause negative public order, but we're next to Torgovan, and we wouldn't want to cause harm to our elven brethren. Now, back to Thilvokas. It's time to climb out of the world roots and attack Zvorak, waging war on the border princes. Clan Angren should join us on the This battle is a pretty obvious win, and we're just after the Amber here, so let's auto resolve it. Now we can either occupy through seeding or raise the town. Occupation will give us the amber, but raising will give us a lot of money. Colonization costs are extreme for the Wood Elves, so taking the money now and colonizing later wouldn't be viable. While Wood Elves occupy settlements and towns, they're really only establishing lookouts to protect the amber there. As such, towns don't go higher than tier 1 and can only get one building slot. This is why my now 14 settlements aren't really fixing my income problem. We're able to build four different types of buildings by default, Zvorak has marble available here, so we're able to build a stone cutter if we wish. A waste stone will give us a garrison and extra replenishment, ideal for frontier settlements. A world route pathway grants reduction in recruitment costs by minus 30%. This effectively allows you to use global recruitment for the cost of normal recruitment. Sacrificial Grounds is a faction-wide military buff building, and Foraging Grounds is a faction-wide economic buff building. Building many of these across your faction has stacking effects, allowing you to reap large benefits with scale. Now we've got our Amber, we can take a look at the tech tree. On the inner lanes, the technologies work as they do for most factions, providing buffs over time and possibly requiring buildings. The outer lanes, however, require Amber and provide massive buffs that change your campaign drastically. Mathlan, Lord of the Deeps, for instance, grants 400% income from ports and diplomatic relations with Tilia, Estalia, Border Princes and Norskin tribes. So let's spend the Amber to get that technology. Now, while I've ultimately destroyed or am at war with those factions, I have stolen their ports and that income bonus will be huge. With coastal towns that have ports, you'll be unable to build any buildings in these towns, so they should be viewed as smaller income centric regions that can be buffed with technologies and trade. As you may remember, I own about 7 of these coastal towns, so while spending amber again is a bit dangerous when it's so low, the reward is potentially very high. King's Glade will be your central hub for everything and provides 10 slots alone. You'll need to spend Amber to upgrade your town to unlock these slots, but they are a must-have. If we check the building browser, we can see two new building chains unique to the Wood Elves, 
Temples and Athalorin. Temples would allow the research of special technologies and provide faction-wide buffs. Athalorin specifics cost two amber each, but unlock special seats on the council for your characters to hold, as well as providing faction benefits. You'll have to balance what you choose to take in your capital settlement, as most units require multiple buildings to recruit, and you have a finite amount. You could always wage war on your elven kin and gain a second town slot settlement, or confederate if the option is available to go about it peacefully. That option is made available when you upgrade the Oak of Ages to tier 3. Looking at the council screen, we can see Orion sits as the king in the woods, with two rank 10 slots either side. The Herald of the Hunt is available to us because we've built the Wild Heath already, and this will allow us to enable the Wild Hunt when we assign it. Fresh off his victory at Zvorak, we'll get Thil Vokulis to sit- wait. Tree men are not permitted to hold positions on the Elven Council? What tree racism is this? We'll put Tala in that position for now and speak to Durthu about this later. Now that everyone has moved again, let's end the turn. Sorry Clan Angren, you'll have to hold them off yourselves for now. Hopefully they can last until we're done with the quest battle and Border Princes and then we'll consider it. Ah, interesting. Widrioth want to form an alliance. They're at war with the Crooked Moon right now and have been losing ever so slightly. So rather sinisterly, I'm hoping that they die so I can take back their town for myself. Ah, so our technology has been researched and now we're comfortably making money. Enough to raise a whole new army if we need to. It seems, however, that official mask business has hampered us ever so slightly, but it'll be a small setback that won't really affect us. Now, it's finally time to join Isrostos and Orion and prepare for battle. Before we do, God we've got Godin, a Waystalker that I've been meaning to upgrade. This guy is an elite hidden archer on the battlefield with some really cool abilities. Using his own upgrades, combined with Orion's powerful missile damage augments, we could make this Waystalker single-handedly take down a Saigor. I thought it was also worth mentioning that our tree men's upgrades work like Orion's in a way, but aren't as powerful. You'll need to decide if you want to focus on missile or melee for your battle augments. So that should demonstrate just how powerful Orion is, as he can go down both chains. Right, so let's merge these guys and retrieve the Horn of the Wild Hunt. I thirst for the hunt. Setting forth. The Hunter. Oka Vinium Ibis. Now that's all for this campaign Let's Play, it's also worth mentioning that we played as the Wood Elves with Orion. You can play as Arguillan under Durthu. Durthu leans more heavily on the forest tree spirit, so his council doesn't allow elves, and his amber units are elven. And yes, it's possible to co-op as both elven factions in both the Grand Campaign and the Mini Campaign. Be sure to subscribe to see what happens next during our Horn of the Wild Hunt Battle Let's Play, and follow us on social media for all of the latest Total War news.